All right, so welcome back to the Winter Fancy Food Show. We are continuing our coverage and we're going to get into a lot of technical aspects of the food industry and one of them is the legal aspect. And with me today, I've got Marie with me. So thanks for stopping in. Yes, happy to be here. Gordon and Reese. Correct, yep, yeah, here in San right, Francisco. Right here in San Francisco. Yeah, we have offices nationwide, um, but I'm based here in San Francisco. All right, beautiful. Yeah. All right, so Marie, let's talk a little bit about, um, obviously food startups, we're going to go into the independent contractor uh, shift in law here right. in California specifically. Obviously, you know, kind of addressing the gig economy, but also it's starting to affect startups because obviously, you know, they are right. hiring, you know, contractors to kind of get their business going. Right. Tell me a little bit about how this is going to hit the uh, food startup today. So the hard thing for any startup is that you often don't have the capital to go out and hire employees. You're afraid of making payroll. And right. so it's a really easy method to say, you know, I'm gonna find a bunch of contractors, you know, delivery drivers, um, you know, somebody who can do my media, somebody who can right. do my writing, you know, the things you don't know how to do as a business that you're trying to get up and running, and you pay them for a specific task um, as opposed to bringing them on as an employee. Well, the new law says you can't do that anymore. You have to, if somebody is doing something that is core to your business, uh, you have to hire them on as an employee. And so it, it's really difficult for a startup that quite frankly just doesn't have the money to have a lot of employees. So let me get this core to your business. So let's think about this for a second. I'm a, I'm a food startup. I'm looking to do PR, which is core to my business. Right. If I hired a PR agency, that would be okay. So that would be okay because somebody else employs the people who are doing the work. All right. So well, what if it's like a, a one man band PR agency and they have a business? So so the one the one man show is kind of on the edge of whether it's okay or not okay. And that's where we're seeing a lot of changes. Ah, um, okay. So so the example I like to use is that as a law firm, um, I need lawyers, I need marketing, I need, you know, the receptionist, but if I have plumbing problems, a janitor yeah. is fine for me to hire. Sure. Um, if I need a janitor, I'm going to go to a company and I'm going to hire, you know, somebody as a contractor, but somebody else employs that person. And gotcha. so as long as somebody else employs that person, you're okay. Interesting. So if they have their own business and you're essentially writing a check to another business, uh, you're kind of out of the woods from, you know, you're, a contractor. Safer. Yeah, you're safer. safer. Yeah. How do they establish that? I mean, there's got to be some sort of... Uh, rule and regulation, what's going to be the enforcement process? So that, that's the tricky part. And I think um, for food in particular, when you have happy people, they're not bringing lawsuits. So the state really doesn't have the funds to go out and enforce. Um, and so you're going to have plaintiffs, essentially, unhappy yeah. contractors uh, who bring these claims and try and enforce the new law. And so right. happy workers means less litigation. And that's what we want. We want people who are happy with what they're doing, the service they're providing. Uh, we want businesses who can get up and running and be successful. Um, so, I mean, it, it seems simple. It doesn't seem like legal advice, but treat people well and you're going to avoid these claims. Yeah. Um, so a contractor might say, okay, I'm upset about this or whatever. I mean, gosh, every business has disgruntled employees. So right. you're bound to have disgruntled contractors. So literally one contractor goes to the state and says, hey, you know, this is happening over here. Literally, that could be the case. So I think they would go to a lawyer and it would be civil litigation in court as opposed to the state doing anything about ah, it. Okay. Um, the state just doesn't have the resources. And yeah. so it'll be civil litigation. Interesting. Um, but I really have not seen that in the food realm yet. Um, I tell my clients, pick your battles. So right, if it's right. something little, um, I want the day off, I, I can't get this job done, let it go. It, yeah. It's not worth picking the wrong battle. Yeah, absolutely. What's well, kind of the contractor world anyway? You don't have much control over other than just saying, here's the project, here's the time in which we need it done. Yeah. If they get it done, yeah. you're But, but great. that's the key, that's the key. So when employers, companies have too much control, the test really is the person should be an employee. Yeah. When you're saying, here's the project, you figure out how to do it and I'll pay you for that project, uh, that's always been the safer route to go right. because you have less control. That person really is a contractor. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well this is gonna be something to follow because obviously this, kind of hit national news with the whole issue with the Uber aspect and, you know, ride sharing in general and that, right. that whole shift and obviously California. Uh, but we've seen it seep over into the media industry. So now media yeah. is not is no longer hiring contract riders. Well, and truck drivers are striking right now. There's actually truck drivers have brought, oh um, brought okay. litigation because th think about the trucks that are owned by a single individual uh -huh. uh, and they're leasing out and you know there's an agreement with the company you know to, to take a certain run of items across the U.S. for them. But they're they're contractors. They're their okay. own little business. Yeah. And they the initially the state said this applies to you and now there's a shift there 
wow. um, due to just a, a large movement by truck drivers saying this shouldn't apply to us. So, um, this so I think could, we're going to see more of that, yeah, more of you, this fighting along. Yeah, you could see this is going to be interesting. Of course, California and California is typically the state that kind of leads the forefront on that domino effect across the, especially yeah. when you go into the major states, uh, to where we could see this adapt in New York, Florida, yeah. Texas. It, it, New York, um, Illinois, uh, Massachusetts, California, those are the four leaders. So if you see a, a law in one of those states, uh, a law like this one, you can expect that it's going to start to filter down. Right. So now Gor at Gordon and Reese, you guys focus on startup law, business? What, where's your, your expertise area? Sure. So we're a full service firm across all 50 states um, doing a little bit of everything. Um, we have a huge employment group. So my specialty has been kind of HR employment law. Okay. Um, and uh, in particular, we have a big retail and hospitality group. So we specialize in working Great. with hospitality industry. So restaurants, wineries, breweries, hotels. Yeah. Um, and obviously we've seen a lot of activity in uh, sexual harassment, those kind of scenarios. So you guys would cover those those types Correct. of issues. I have uh, had a number of sexual harassment cases, uh, particularly in the restaurant industry. Yeah. And you know, the, this world has changed uh, following Me Too. Um, there has been an uptick in litigation, but there's also been a huge uptick in administrative claims. So um, you know, employees can go to their employer and make a complaint, or they can go to a state or federal agency and then go to court. It's that kind of middle ground where I've seen the, yeah. the biggest increase. Yeah, all right. So. Obviously, California is uh, kind of forefronting this with uh, the contractor issue. Let's jump into the ADA. Sure. All right. So, uh, ADA just released uh, a new uh, requirement for retail locations to make their websites accessible. And obviously, this hits the restaurant industry being a retail front. Uh, yeah. And anybody that's direct to consumer now, I mean, you oh, could yeah. have a direct to consumer product here that would t essentially Absolutely. have to have that uh, ability. Explain that to our our viewers, because yeah. that's a really complicated piece. So so this is something um, where I get this shocked look, especially with restaurants where I say, look, you know that there was always the ADA claim where somebody comes to the door and says the door is too heavy or you don't have the right bar to push, and you were used to those cases. They can now attack your website, and clients go, what? What, what does this mean for us? Um, so what it means is there is a set of guidelines, uh, and it's just guidelines. These are not laws, but they're guidelines that need okay. to be followed um, for the website. And, and it's primarily for people who are hearing impaired or vision impaired. So um, I'll use vision impaired as an example. There is a software called JAWS that, that reads the website to you out loud. I see. Um, and so if I'm not able to see the screen, I can use the software and it will read to me you know, menu items. Um, the things that are tricky are things like photos. Right. Um, how does a, a software read Interpret a photo? Yeah. So there has to be text behind that photo that explains in great detail what that photo is. It's called so, alt text, yep. And so yep. it's a common it's a common thing, but there is a software that's writing on the essentially on the website itself that's enabling this particular software to interface Correct. with it. Okay. Yep. So there has to be the ability to interface. Um, so where we've seen problems is things like a static PDF. So a restaurant uploads or, or right. any consumer, you know, they, they upload In a, a picture. In lieu of an HTML page, um, they drop a, a PDF yeah. up there for their menu. Exactly. And then and then the software can't read it. And that's where litigation is coming. Ah. Um, because somebody says, I, I wanted to eat at your restaurant and I wanted to go on in advance of coming to your restaurant to see if you had gluten-free items. And yep. I am now deterred from coming to your restaurant because I couldn't read your menu. So this is primarily retail or any direct-to-consumer website or company? Correct. All right. Um, and so the idea is that there's a set of guidelines um, because you know the, the web is always changing. Uh, it would be hard to have anything more than a guideline, but there, there are general rules um, that web designers and, uh, and retailers now have to follow to make sure that their websites are in fact compliant. Yeah. Um, the same rules that apply in terms of you know civil penalties uh, under kind of traditional ADA law uh, now apply here. Um, the thing that's harder to show is what was the harm that was done? Right. Uh, did you decide not to stay at the hotel or not to go to the restaurant because you couldn't access our website? Um, what's the real harm? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, there's constant changes. And so uh, how can you keep your website fully compliant? It's nearly mm -hmm. impossible. So you do have to find really good vendors uh, who know what they're doing in this ADA space who can keep your website up to Does this apply to apps? It does apply to apps. So if you've got an app on the app store, it has to essentially enable, your app has to be enabled as well. Correct. Wow, I'm, I have not seen anything out there on this. 
Yeah. Uh, in terms of the app aspect of it, boy, this is going to be something to yeah. watch for I sure. I mean, th this is something we're seeing in food delivery a lot. Um, right. And like you said, direct to consumer. Um, I think this conference is the perfect example. Somebody yep. goes and buys something and they go online and want to figure out how to buy more. Your website's not accessible. That's problematic. Yeah. Okay. All right. More hits uh, in terms of legal. If I'm, st I'm doing a food startup, uh, which is a lot of these types of companies that are here at the Specialty Food uh, Show. Um, what are some of the things and pitfalls that me as the entrepreneur should be kind of, obviously I'm gonna get a good attorney, I'm gonna get good financial advice, but there's you know there's probably a handful of things that we could say, hey, really watch out for this particular right. scenario. So, so you said good attorney. I don't always see that. Um, so, so somebody tries to form their business, so you have to file something with whatever state you're in, yeah. um, and, and you do the bare minimum on what you have to do. Because they legal again, zoom it. They, yeah, you're, exactly. <laughs> you, you go and you Google. It's the, the yeah. world of Google contracts. Um, and so you do the bare minimum because you're a new business owner. You're, yeah. you're a startup. You're trying to figure out what you're doing. You're maybe not succeeding yet. You're still trying to get investors. Um, I would say do as much right from the beginning as yeah. you can. Um, because where I see the most problems is with startups who just did the bare minimum. Right. Um, you know, they they maybe brought on an employee or two, but they didn't have any policies. They, you know, an employee handbook is really easy and inexpensive to get. A yeah. lot of people don't take that step to get it. Um, if you do finally get to the point where you have a brick and mortar location, again, kind of cutting corners because you're worried about cost. Um, I'd say with any professional, whether it's a good CPA, lawyer, you know, financial advisor, um, spend a little bit of money up front to do it right because it'll right save on. you a lot of money later. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's one thing that we are seeing is just the growth and the acceleration of food startups and obviously new restaurant operations and the food service side. And we hear this more and more. We, we even had uh, have had a series on legal topics around yeah. this. So it's not going away, obviously. And I, I love the advice. It's great for those. Anything that you guys are seeing coming down the pipeline in terms of litigation that you're saying, ooh, this could be an issue maybe in a couple of years? Yeah, so something that's really hot uh, in California, but we're seeing it in other states as well, is arbitration agreements. Okay. Um, and so that's the idea that you can have somebody um, sign an agreement that says, I won't go to court later. Right. If I have a problem, I'll take it to this private forum called arbitration. Um, California has recently changed their rules on arbitration, and that's also similar to the independent contractor. What is going away? Um, they're trying. They're trying to make it a very, very narrow application, um, and this is being challenged right now. So, so why wouldn't why wouldn't the courts want arbitration so you would eliminate the clogging of the court system? So this is something that came out of the, the hashtag Me Too. Um, the, the good thing about arbitration is it is often faster, um, and you have a you know a direct. And it's not involving the courts. It's not involving the court. You have a, a direct arbitrator to go to. You start the process. The employer actually has to pay for a lot of the process. So there's a lot of good to it. Yeah. The bad is that it's a private forum, and so there was this ah. there was this idea, especially with sexual harassment claims, that that employers are trying to sweep it under the rug and keep these things quiet. Um, and so I think that was the real pushback is that if you go to arbitration you keep it quiet. And the public understandably didn't like that. You want to air these cases and, and okay. make people pay for That them. I could get and understand, but for the, I mean, that's kind of the, I would think that's a little bit in the extreme versus most people, it's like, hey, listen, we, we disagree on the contract. Yeah. Let's work out an arbitration. Otherwise we're clogging the court system well, for something more important. Well, we often see this swing where there, there's a problem and uh, I think our politicians, they want to respond, they but they maybe swing too far yeah. to the other side. Yeah, the and so, so we're waiting for the pendulum to kind of slow down here. All right, okay, Marie, Trimble, Holvik, Gordon and Reese, thank you so much thank for stopping you. in. All right, okay, so all you food startups out there, you heard it first right here at the Winter Fancy Food Show. Make sure you get your articles in order to get this food start startup going for you. Make sure and stay tuned right here for more great content from the Fancy Food Show. We'll see you soon.